five meters. It's a megalodon. The fascination with sharks is our fascination with the ocean. They are the true monsters of the sea. And, and the reason it's scary, why is a shark more scary than a lion? You can see a lion. That shark comes out of nowhere. I was looking at um, some designs of sets and scenes and moments from the art director and the production designer. And there is this picture of the back of a little girl standing at a window with this giant mouth right there. And we all look at it and say, that's the movie. But that's not my idea. That's an artist's idea. Well, you always start with the, the storyboard and the, the art that you've been given by the art department. The, their direction was pool beagle, shark, good, good to look at, uh, great white, good to look at. So of course, we look a lot. <laughs> you start with Wikipedia, you start with Steve Alton's novel, you start with Shark Week, you, sh you, you go to everything you know about sharks and what experts tell you about sharks. Science knows very little about megalodons. There's huge debates about what they were, what their genetic line is. The single most important thing for me was that it wasn't just a scaled up great white shark. We've tried to make it look fearsome, prehistoric, and terrifying, as well as it looking awesome and sometimes graceful and very at home in the water. <laughs> But um, most of all, I think what we're trying to do is get away from the shark that everyone's seen, which is the Great White. It's not that, it's something different. The fact that science knows so little about Megalodons, Meg, gave us opportunity to fill in the blanks the way we wanted to. And we had two issues. One, what did this shark look like? But two, what would this giant shark look like if it lived at 30,000 feet below the surface of the water? So everything from coloration to fin size, to mouth shape, to snout shape, to gills, are all up for grabs. We went for a sort of a, a, a gnarly, knobbly look of the skin. We didn't go for just regular shark skin. We wanted, we wanted something a bit more stated, you know, a bit more monster creature-like than that. We also went for a sort of a brown mottled coloration, not like a great white at all. I think that these gills in a dig chat really do flatten out. One of the things we did, we gave it more gills than a normal shark would have. Because of the oxygen poor environment at the bottom of the ocean, this might be a shark that evolved more gills. One fish did all this. Let's get you filth. The Meg's fin was about 10 feet tall in the end, after all the size iterations that we went through. The fin itself went through a number of different designs because the, the sort of back end of the fin, the dorsal fin, if you look at sh uh, real sharks like great whites, you can see that they have lots of tears and nicks on the back of the fin, and that's what makes them unique. It's a bit like markings on an animal. Also, we didn't want to just have many, many shots of just the fin going through the water. You know, that classic shot, fin going through water. So what we did, what Scanline did so brilliantly with that was they built in the, the actual geometry of the shark body pushing the water along. So we got these big stated sort of humps of white water, sometimes proceeding and sometimes going after the fin as well. As well as the tail that's swishing backwards and forwards behind that dorsal fin to give it a really different level of dynamism. Oh, Hatha. Are you okay? There's a monster and it's watching us. <laughs> There are hundreds of teeth on this thing, and they, they're, they're kind of arranged in layers. That the ones at the front eventually fall off, and other ones sort of rotate round from behind. It's interesting the way the teeth are arranged are almost so that when prey goes into the mouth, it can't get out again. You know, so it's really it's really vicious and nasty. And the teeth are razor sharp and serrated for tearing flesh. So this is a casting of a small megalodon tooth. She had these little saw blade edges to them. This is a casting off a real fossil, but that's been in the sea for a long time and it's still reasonably sharp. So I can't imagine how sharp 
they were in reality. They're so big, the way that they eat off chunks of it is that they stab it in and then they shake their head and they saw off the fleshy bits. How big is that thing? Between 70 and 90 feet, 21 to 27 meters. The megalodon was the largest shark that ever existed. It feared nothing. It's big. It's really big. And we didn't make that up. We think that in reality, they were sort of probably around 60 feet long. Uh, this is based on the only thing that is left behind in the present day from the original real megalodons, which is fossilized teeth. There's nothing else because sharks don't have bony skeletons, they have cartilaginous skeletons, which means that they all kind of disappear over the millennia. So the only thing that's left behind is the teeth. So based on the size of the tooth, we extrapolate that they're probably around 60 feet long. For the purposes of this film, we made her 75 feet. When you see it, you're just, it's so overwhelming. You know, you imagine a T-Rex, you kind of have that in your head, I think. We've all seen that. You've never seen anything like this. And in a really interesting way, we're so small, we're like a sardine. We're not even a good meal. So that's why they got to come here and have like a thousand people and get full. The Megalodon is huge, but it's also very agile and very fast. So it can turn. It's got quite a flexible body. It can turn on a dime, really. With a big swish of the tail, it can get up to speeds approaching that of a small speedboat. So it's definitely spent, you know, millions of years evolving into this hydrodynamic killing machine, which is what it is. So we studied the biomechanics of sharks quite closely. And at the visual effects facilities, Scanline, Double Negative and Imageworks, we did some tests of skeletons and how, you know, fish skeletons, how they move, shark skeletons with the uh, dorsal fins and the, and the pectoral fins and the tail section to provide um, forward motion. And we did lots of studies of swim cycles. We're taking the science and bringing it together with artists and, and painters and sculptors and scientists and all this to come up with a believable look. And it changed a lot because my view of what it looked like may not be this producer's view of what it looked like and their view of what it looked like. So there were debates and discussions and arguments. And then you used to say to the visual effects people, make it look totally 100% real while we argue about what that actually means. The hardest thing about shooting a film like this is that the monster's not there, the shark isn't there. So the actors have to conjure up things, I think, in a way that's it's different for actors. And I, they always talk about how much, in a sense, how much harder it is. It takes a while to get used to this idea of acting to nothing. It's also hard for the technicians because we're all trying to figure out from a camera point of view, like, is it in the right frame? Uh, our visual effects people are trying to figure out if we're moving the camera correctly. Our director is wondering how it's going to all cut together. All right, so let's restage it and, and shoot again. So, you know, it creates a lot of uncertainty, although many of us have worked a lot with visual effects. So we recognize the obstacles to it, and you just have to be very methodical about taking them on. Little details that need to be captured correctly are executed really precisely. These are all the the challenges. It's not what makes it hard, it's actually what makes it fun and interesting. For me, what I found the most challenging with this kind of character is sharks are notoriously uncute. They're fascinating and charmless. They don't even blink. They don't have shoulders. They don't have eyebrows, right? There's no expression. Shark happy and shark eating you is the same face. So, you're trying to get some drama into this and you got one face to work with. Now, if you have the shark go to be mean and scary, okay, we got the it's scarier, but you just lost some truth. And if shark does regular shark face, it feels boring. So you're dealing with that kind of stuff. The more you get the science right, the more you draw them in with the truth, the more real things get. So therefore, the more frightening it is. Jesus. You know, we all learned a great lesson watching Jaws. That the longer you wait and the less you see it, the scarier it'll be. We didn't do that. 
<laughs> we get there pretty quick. Hey, now don't close out, I've got some awesome movie extra trivia. One of the great pioneers of special effects was Ray Harryhausen. He pushed the limits of imagination, visual effects and miniatures in ways that inspired generations after him. One of his most famous moments in film was a scene in Jason and the Argonauts, where the hero had a sword fight with seven skeleton warriors. The scene was done with stop motion and took four months to complete. Hmm. Now, do you like my shirt? You can get one for yourself in the shop section under the video.